Hold up. I know you guys have seen these really cool shots on the internet, like a shot of a drone diving down a building, chasing a sports car, and you guys are wondering how to get those kind of shots. Well, that's what I'm going to be showing you guys in today's video. Those kind of shots are called FPV shots, and they're done using an FPV drone. So this is the Gepard C Mark V. It's a freestyle FPV drone, and this is a Shen drone square to build so both of these are fev drones and to get started you need at least one actually no you don't what you need is a controller so i'm going to be showing you guys why you need this how to set it up how to start learning to fly fev drones let's get into it so here's the deal flying fev drones is nothing as easy as flying your regular dji consumer drones so the first thing you're going to do if you want to get started with fev is to get a controller like this. This is the Radio Master Pocket. It's an FPV simulator that you can run on your PC or Mac. The FPV simulator that I use is Liftoff and you can get it on Steam for about $19.99. So that's like $20. Now, the reason you want to use a simulator first, if you go straight to flying an FPV drone, it's not a maybe. You are going to crash immediately. You're going to crash within five seconds of leaving the ground or less maybe one and you're gonna do that repeatedly because fpv drones unlike the dji drones they take a number of crashes to spoil so if you just go ahead and fly an fpv drone without first practicing in the simulator you are going to destroy your drone drones can get a bit expensive and you don't want to destroy your drone within the first 24 hours of getting it. You're gonna need an FPV simulator. So I'm gonna jump to my computer and I'm gonna be showing you guys how to download and set up Liftoff. So let's go. First, you're gonna go to the Steam website and you're gonna create an account and install Steam. And then go on Steam and search for Liftoff, which is the simulator that we're gonna be using in this video. Buy and install Liftoff. This is where you would see purchase, but as you can see it's already in my library. There are many other simulators you can use, but I like Liftoff because I think it has great physics and it has great graphics as well. By great physics, I mean that the way the drone feels when you're flying it in the simulator is almost as if you're flying a real drone. It even has simulation for an effect called prop wash. Here are a few other simulators that you can check out if you want to. Liftoff also has a really good tutorial session, which is how I learned how to fly personally, and I'm gonna show you guys how to get everything set up. So my controller of choice is the Radio Master Pocket, and that's because in the FPV hobby, Radio Master makes really amazing products for the price. This is priced at about $65. This is the Radio Master Pocket, the ELRS version. The good thing about getting this controller is you're already buying your way into the FPV system because this controller can actually be used to fly an FPV drone. So you get this at a great price and it's also what you can use to fly your drone when you eventually decide to buy one. This is how it's gonna come. It comes in a box like this and it's pretty straightforward once you get inside. From stickers, um, manual, we have the controller itself. In this pouch, carry-on pouch that's pretty nice. And then there's also a USB cord inside. You open this up. It actually looks really nice for the price. It feels pretty good in the hands. I have big hands and this doesn't feel too small. Neither does it feel too big. This is the Radio Master Boxer, which is way bigger and is a more fully featured controller. But as you can see, it's feels pretty good in my hands. This is much smaller than that, but it doesn't feel bad at all. So the thumbsticks come hidden behind, so it packs down pretty nice for traveling. So you can put this in the protective sleeve and just, you know, toss it into your bag. And yeah, when I got it for the first time, it felt very stiff. And this is going to be the gimbal adjustment section of the manual. And you're going to want to adjust the up, down, and left, right movements of your sticks till they feel reasonably soft enough. I've already adjusted mine, so I'm not going to be doing that in this video. This controller uses 1850 cell batteries. You can find this at any hardware store. First thing you put in your batteries. You need to make sure you match the polarity, meaning positive to positive, negative to negative, or else you're going to blow up your $65 radio. So yep, we're all done, power it on, push the power button. Welcome to HDM. 
this is the mode 2 version so this basically means that the throttle stick is on your left it's not tension so meaning throttle all the way down throttle all the way up when you're flying fpv you're going to want your throttle not to recenter like this does so this is your throttle this is your pitch roll and your it comes with a firmware called htx to connect it you're gonna need type c cord i have one connected to my computer already and you just push this here a menu comes up saying usb joystick usb storage and usb serial you use this selector dial here to select usb joystick and then you click on it and then in lift off as you can see it has detected a radio master pocket so the first thing we're going to do is come to options go to controls controller and mine is behaving properly already as i'm moving the sticks but out of the box it is not going to work like this so this is what you're going to do you're going to hit calibrate start calibration and you're going to fold the motion on the screen like this so now it says to center all sticks and then push throttle to the end center it back hitch center sticks Roll, center, then your. And you click save. And that is pretty much all you have to do to calibrate your gimbal. So now let's go to exit and let's go to tutorial go to first flight this is a series of training sessions that are going to get you started with flying a drone so you start from introduction to line of sight to forward flying up until you get to racing so i'm going to just go straight to racing yeah racing is actually not easy so if you're at a stage where you already know how to race or if you've learned if you've practiced enough up to the point where you can race then i think you're pretty good so let me set this down and try and go through this race oh, my battery is lowered that battery is not good let's go one more time So this drone doesn't, this um, race doesn't have like actual opponents flying against you. But later on, you're going to be able to select races where you like see your opponents flying around you and everything. That's pretty much it. Let me open a freestyle session and let's have some fun, guys. So let's go to free flight. This is, this is my favorite place to practice overpass so one other thing that was pretty confusing from when i got started is rates so rates are essentially how much a stick movement like this would move the drone and i'm just going to show you guys what my rates are here so these are my rates i use actual rates i've played around with different settings and i figured that these are what work best for me you can get like some really smooth shots with but then when you push the sticks all the way to the end, you get over 600 degrees of movement. I mean, you'll learn about all those later, but you can just copy and paste my rates. I think they're pretty easy to use. These are not the easiest rates, but they're definitely better than what comes stuck in the lift top. So you can try these, you can do some research and see if they're like other rates you prefer. So let's get fly. When I fly, I tend to pinch the sticks or I think this is called a hybrid pinch style where you like have your thumbs on the sticks and then you support them with your index fingers. And 
this I have found gives me a lot more control when I'm trying to like do like evasive maneuver. So I pretty much just fly in this style all through. Even when using like my bigger radio, the Radio Master Box, I pretty much just always pinch my sticks like this. So the good thing about practicing a simulator is that you do not destroy your drone when you are first learning how to fly a drone. Because even when you do know how to fly, you're still going to crash a couple of times. But you're still going to crash a couple of times. But it's going to be like maybe mistakes. And you're not just going to flat out destroy your drone just because you didn't know anything about how to fly. Let's see. <laughs> let's see, let's try through. Ooh. It actually happens pretty. So let me try it here. So something like that. So that wasn't bad at all. So let's try it here again. You go. Ooh, I'm, I'm getting a lot better. So guys, I hope you liked today's video. Make sure to like and subscribe. I'm going to be putting out a lot more content in the coming weeks. So stay tuned. Smash that like button. Share to your friends if you like the video. Drop a comment and I'll see you guys later.